Hello, Dr. Ron England here, and uh, we're this is uh, this is programming with Python for engineers, and uh, we're going to start right off the bat learning how to program. I'm going to assume that you've got your Python environment set up and ready to go. I will be using Python with Notepad++ as my editor, so you can kind of see how that works. And we're going to do this completely by examples. So here's the first example that we're going to cover. This is going to be how to take a map with UTM coordinates, uh, two UTM coordinates, and calculate the distance between the two coordinates and the bearing. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about how that whole thing works on the bearing. The bearings work this way. If you go in this direction, this bearing right here straight up is zero. And then this bearing right here would be 90. And then the bearing straight down would be 180, and then over here would be 270. This makes for a great problem to solve when you're trying to take a coordinate that's here and a coordinate that's here and make sure that you always calculate the bearing because you've got four cases. One is the in this quadrant, one is in this, uh, let me use a highlighter, one would be in this quadrant over here, one would be in this quadrant over here, one would be over here, and then one would be over here. What I want to do is I'm going to show you how to calculate it if it's in this essentially north East quadrant. A little bit about UTM coordinates. There are there are there's multiple coordinate systems for for mapping. There's latitude and longitude, and then there's UTM. UTM coordinates are given in meters. So essentially, the coordinate will have a location in meters and another location in meters. Okay. So when those two those locations are given, and then underneath this whole thing right here, you'd have a map. So just consider this a compass with a map underneath. So a few things that are important about the calculations. This, from this coordinate, the distance to the north, to the second coordinate, is called northing. The coordinate this, from this direction over here to the next coordinate, okay, is called easting. So that's northing and that's easting. So coordinate here, coordinate up here, and then northing and easting. So let's figure out how to actually write a program in Python that will take those two coordinates and do that. So let's bring over Notepad++, and I think I'll put Notepad++ right there, fits right into the window. And I've already created the file. What I did is I just saved as distance calculator onepy in Notepad++. I did one other thing that will make your life very useful. You don't have to do this, but it's going to make your life useful. You've saved this with a Python extension, the run command here with run. Okay, there's no program in there right now, so you're not going to be able to do program to run, but there's a, there's a way to make this work very, very well, and, uh, because what you're going to do is you're going to want to run Python with the actual file that you're saving. So let's write the file first, and then we'll do this. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to print out the uh, what you're doing to the, to the user. This program will calculate the distance between two coordinates and the bearing. Okay, now what is that actually in Python? Python, this is I'm, you're going to get used to the syntax of Python, and I'm not going to bear down all on syntax of Python because Python has a unique syntax. It's not using it doesn't use a lot of quotes and or it doesn't use a lot of uh, brackets and stuff like that. It's, it uses indentations to demark things, but Print is a function, and this will actually output something to the screen. So now if I save this, okay, well, that's now saved. I think I've actually got my run set up. Oh, no, no, the program. I'll show you how to do that um, while we get, when we get to it. But if I wanted to run this right now, well, the first thing I need to do is I would need to know the location of the Python. Um, and so I need to find it. Well, Python itself is located in my case, in the subdirectory, users, eaglen, app data, local programs, Python, Python 37, 32. I think I'll put this up here so you can see that. That's the location of the Python executable. So what I need to do is I need to run the Python executable when I hit run. So let's go over here to run and hit the run. And the program to be run is I need to, I need to find that program. So uh, what I can do, I'll bring this back over. I can highlight this guy right here where it's located. Now I can go down here into the file name, and I can put that into the file name, and it's going to bring up that Python spot. 
So there's the Python executable now in here. Um, now, there's, of course, there's a little bit more that I have to do. I need a switch dash I. And now I need to tell it to use the local, um, I need to use the local program there. And hopefully I can remember if I put in quotes, dollar, open paren, close paren, and oh gosh, I really do hope I can remember, because I'm going to do this off of memory, the name of the local variable for the program. Uh, and I am drawing a blank, uh, but I'll look it up and I'll put it in there. Uh, because what I'm doing here is I'm making an environment variable that's actually the program that I just saved. So I will look it up, because you're going to use exactly the same thing. Uh, wait, good idea. Show you how to look it up. Okay, let's go ahead and let's bring up the font of all knowledge, Google, and I will say Notepad++. Plus, plus. Whoops, you can't see what I'm typing here because uh, it goes up into the browser here. Notepad++ plus, plus. run Python um, run Python script. So hopefully it'll say, ah, there it is, full current path, right there, full current path. All right, so we now come back over to here, and the variable is full current path. I guess it's a good idea that you saw how I did that. So if I hit run, oh, look at this. Over here, Python is now running. And notice that it just said this program will calculate the distance between two coordinates and the bearing. All right, control Z, enter, closes that window. All right, now that was running Python. I, you should by at this point have already done a little bit of Python getting the environment set up, but you now see some neat little things that you can do. The reason I did that is when I hit this run and hit run, you know, I really do want to not have to go through a bunch of hoops to bring Python up and running, other than just bring it down into this window. And you can see that makes life a little bit easier to do. Control C, enter. So now, let's go back to our program. What were we doing? Well, remember, we were trying to write a program to, to do the bearing and the distance. I got to get these two guys from the users. I got to get the coordinates here and the coordinates here. So let's go show how we can do that. Well, I'm going to call the coordinates x east, x north, y east, and y north. Okay, because that's the east and, and east and north coordinates. So if I go x east equals now, I need to get the information from the user, but I need to prompt the user to do that, and that is the input function. So I will put enter x east. Very simple. Now there's a problem with this, and that the input's going to return a string. So I'm going to need to call another function, int. So I'm going to wrap the whole thing in another function that's the int, and it's going to convert that string into a uh, into an integer. Okay. Now where do I know these functions? I know these functions because I've read the Python documentation that tells me what these functions exist. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that four times. But all I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go, okay, the next one, remember, was there's x east, x north, okay, and it's not easy, it's east, but it doesn't matter on these next ones because now it's going to be x north. Then the next one is going to be y east, and input enter y, whoops, change this to y, and east, and then y north, and then it's going to be now y north. All right, so now I should, if I ran this again, I should be prompted for the four different uh, x east, x north, y east, y north. And let's do that. Let's go ahead, save it, control s, run it. Okay, run, remember I already put the run in there. All right, then look, it's, uh, oops, you can't see it up here. It says enter x east, so let's just make it 100, simple, 100, and then make the other ones 200, and 200, and voila, and that's it. That's all the program does, because that's all you told it to do. Uh, I, am, I did see that there's a couple things I want to do. I'm going to put a colon here and a space, colon space, colon space. It's going to make it look a little bit cleaner in the program, so those, those things are done. Now, i got to do a calculation here. I need to calculate the distance. Let's say distance 
equals. This is, by the way, this equals. It's the assignment operator. That is not a comp comparison operator. So we're going to assign something to the variable distance. So just like algebra, just like calculus, these are variables. Great. Distance. Now, how am I going to do this? Well, as it turns out, uh, I need to use the equation, which is the square root of the square, sum of the squares of the differences in the, in the locations. This is not a difficult equation. I think everybody that's just using, everybody that's in this class has had calculus, but I got to take the square root. And the square root's in a library, and the library is the math library, so I need to go back up here and I need to import math, because the math library has to be imported. Now I can go math dot square root is SQRT, and how do I know what that is? Oh, I read the documentation. So I need to take the square root of the sum of the squares of the differences of the coordinates. What does that really say? Well, it says, okay, the, dif the, the differences in the coordinates. That would be x east minus y east, okay, squared plus x north minus y north whoops, north squared, squaring, by the way, to a power is just star star, really straightforward, and that's now done, and I could go ahead and say print the distance is, and now I'm going to go ahead and close that out, and I'm going to print, now I can't put the dist on the same line, actually I can, but I'm not showing you how to do that to put, because one is a string, and one and distance is, by the way, a uh, number. So I can't put those on the same line just yet. You're going to learn how to do that later. So what are we going to do right now? I'm going to now, now that I know, you should know the shortcuts, by the way, I'm going to hit F5, which by, okay, waha, it's going to let me run it. I now run it. Down this baby comes. 100, 100, 200, 200. Okay, whoops. Uh, what happened? It didn't give me the distances. I do know what happened. Control Z. Um, I'm going to go jump out. I didn't save it. It's running the file. It's not running straight from here. It's running the file. So you have to save the file before you do the run. Now I hit F5 once again. Go ahead and do it. I'm going to bring it over here so you can see it. 100, 100, 200, 200, boom. And the distance is 141.4, which, by the way, if you check the distances between the two the triangles, if you, do, if you calculate this out, you're going to find that that's the right number. All right, so far, so good. We also need the bearing. And remember, there's actually four cases for the bearing. In this case, the tangent of theta, okay, the tangent of theta is the easting over the north thing, and theta is what we actually want. Now, theta is going to give you theta in radians, and we will we'll need to convert that to um, I want to have it in degrees. So there is a little bit of a conversion that's going to go on here, but that's not going to be that hard. But there's four quadrants, which means that we've got to calculate it differently for the four quadrants. Because each of the quadrants, as you're calculating, this quadrant, if you do the like the this is the location here, okay, now your theta is going to be right here, okay, and you're doing the distances like that. And your north thing is negative, but you're going to just convert it to a positive, and you've got to do the tangent of this theta. Okay, same thing over here if you're in this quadrant. Now you could also do it from this, this, this direction right now also. You would just change the sign and make the theta right here. Again, this is just the simple math associated with this. And this is not complex math. If this is complex math, you're in the wrong class. Print distance. Right, so we've got to figure out the different, core, different, different sectors of this. And we need to do the calculation slightly different for each sector. If... Now, I'm only going to do it for the upper right segment. So if the upper right segment is going to be if y east is greater than, uh, uh, let's see, x east, that's one part of that. And there's the syntax for if, condition, colon, and the next thing you're going to do is you're going to tab over. Well, you also have got the quadrant actually has two conditionals. The next conditional is the north. If y north is greater than x north, well, not too bad, colon, now, tab over one more. What this is, what everything that's tabbed over is going to be what executed if that if condition is positive, if, is, is true. You need to calculate the bearing. 
varying is equal to. Um, luckily, I know the conversion factor from radians to degrees off the top of my head. It's 57.2598. I think that's enough accuracy right there. And I need to go back. Let's go back to here. We need to take the uh, arc tangent. That's why, by the way, we input the math because the arc tangent is also, just like the square root, the arc tangent is also in the math library. So we're going to go math.atan. Okay, and remember what we said? It was uh, the north, it was uh, in this case, we can go, it's the easting over the north thing. Well, that's kind of easy to calculate. The easting over the north thing is just the differences. So that would be y east minus x east over y north. Whoops, I need to put that in parentheses over y north minus x north. Boom. Boom, close the whole thing. Now I can go back over and I can now, I'm gonna put a space in here. Print, let's print the bearing. Whoops, let's put that in quotes because it's a string. The bearing is quotes, doop, 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 do, and print bearing. Let's see how that looks, okay? I think we did it pretty well here. So let's go ahead and knock out that F5, run it. Oh, what did I forget to do? I forgot to save it. Okay, control S to save. Now I can hit the F5 to run, run. Okay, let's bring the guy down here again. Um, oops, it already told me there was a syntax error in the print of bearing, which was nice because it said, hey, you know, it already, so I go back over here. Oh, I forgot to put the bearing in because it's a function, I forgot to put that in the quotes because you have to have the, the quotes around the arguments that are going to a function call. Control S, F5, run, let's take a look. Okay, let's do 100, enter 100, 200, enter 200, boom, distance, bearing, the bearing should be pretty close to 45, uh, to 45. you'd expect it because that's about halfway, 44.97, distance is 141.421. Voila, you can test it with other numbers, and you have now written an actual useful functional program in, um, in Python. We're going to go forward and forward fast on how to use Python for doing all sorts of calculations. This is your first program. Okay, it does, it's going to get be a lot more from here, but you're going to learn to love to use Python to do quick and simple calculations. The nice thing about this one is, Okay, you've got this program. Okay, control S. If you now need to calculate distances and bearings, you've got something to do it. It's real, real quick and simple, and you can reuse it whenever you feel like it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I hope that you are going to enjoy programming scientific calculations in Python. Thank you very much. Dr. Ronnie Glenn, out.